Hello! If you're watching this video right now, then you probably want to know a little bit about the periodic table. Which you should know looks a little something like this. Confusing, right? Well, let me show you something else that's also confusing if you don't know how to read it. That was piano sheet music. And unless you know how to play piano, like me, then it's probably just gonna look like dots with sticks on lines that have no purpose. But trust me, once you learn how to read it, you will find that it has so much information, it is crazy. It's time for Fun Facts with Robin. Yeah! Let's get started. Now the first thing that I'm going to mention before I mention anything else about the periodic table is that most of the elements on the periodic table are metals. Metals. Now let's start from right to left. Now first we have the gases, then we have the non-metals, and then we have this little staircase here that pretty much divides the non-metals and the metals. But every element touching the staircase is a metalloid. Except for aluminum. Aluminum is a metal. But everything else beyond that staircase to the left is a metal. Except for mercury, which is a liquid. Metal. So technically it is a metal, but it's also a liquid. So yeah. Everything on the left side is a metal, except for mercury, which is a liquid. Oh, and bromine. Bromine's also a liquid. Those are the only two liquids on the periodic table. Another thing that you want to know about the periodic table is the groups and the periods. Now the groups on the periodic table go up and down, and the periods go from left to right. So basically a group is the columns, and the periods are the row. Now groups are labeled 1 through 18, going from left to right, and periods are labeled 1 to 7, going up to down. Let's use argon as an example. Now argon would be in column 18, and in row three. Groups on the periodic table are also what is known as families. Let's use argon as an example of family. Argon is in the noble gases, so its family members would be helium, neon, krypton, xenon, radon, and well, I guess an anoxium. Because, well, listen, an anoxium is new, and he's just trying to figure out what he is and what his purpose is in the periodic table so he can fit in, so he can be accepted. Not like that would apply to any of you, but you get my drift. So you got your alkali metals, you got your alkali earth metals, you got your transition metals, you got the boron family, the carbon family, the nitrogen family, the oxygen family, and the fluorine family, right? Wrong! It's the halogens. That one is going to screw you up. Remember that one. And last but never least, the noble gases. So now that we've looked at the periodic table as a whole, let's take a look at one of those individual squares to see what kind of information it has on it. Let's use argon as an example. In fact, let's use argon for all the examples. Not because I'm doing this for a school project or anything, which I'm not. I'm just a kind, generous person who wants to share her knowledge with the world. And I want a good grade. So yeah. So let's use argon for an example. The things that you'll find on basically all the squares are what? It's atomic mass. And the atomic mass is basically the mass or the weight of the atom. Example, argon's atomic mass is 39.9. Another thing that square is going to have is the atomic number. Example, argon's atomic number is 18. Now the atomic number is basically to tell you how many protons the element has. And I bet that you didn't know this. The periodic table can help you construct the atom of the element. So, we already know argon has 18 protons, and because protons have to have the same number as electrons, that means that it also has 18 electrons. But how do we find neutrons? You get it from the mass number, which is basically the atomic mass just rounded to the nearest whole number, which argon at 39.9 would be 40. So, 40 subtract 18 is 22. Bam! 22 
22 neutrons. Simple as that. And it can also tell you how many rings the atom has by its row. Example, argon is in the third row, therefore it has three rings. How many electrons go on each ring? I don't know. You're gonna have to look that one up. But what I know is that the atom of argon looks like this. I know that it may seem a little complex, but it's actually a lot smaller than some elements on the periodic table, like gold. <sighs> Boy. But what I can tell you is that there will always be two electrons on the first ring, always. Except for hydrogen, which only has one electron. But here's the thing, argon may not always have 22 neutrons. Why? Isotopes. So atoms of the same element that have a different number of neutrons are isotopes. And it really just all depends on the atom's weight. Example, argon has six isotopes that range from argon 36 to argon 41. And the atomic mass is the weighted average of what the atom might weigh. Which basically means if I gave you 100 atoms, then more than likely a majority of them would have 22 neutrons and have an atomic number of 40. Another thing that elements are used for are compounds. And a compound is a substance that consists of two or more elements. Example, argon, right? No, I'm gonna use H2O. H2O is a compound because it includes both hydrogen and oxygen. But here are some common compounds for argon, just in case you were wondering. There's argon chloride fluoride. Yeah, try saying that three times fast. Argon fluoride hydride and argon chloride hydride. Now, elements have different types of matter at room temperature. Example, gold is a solid. Argon is a gas. In fact, argon is an insert gas. Now all elements have uses. Example, argon is used in light bulbs, lasers, glow tubes, welding, plasma globes. So yeah, if it weren't for argon, you wouldn't even be watching this video. Why? Because the projector wouldn't work. Why? Because it has a light bulb in it. So you can thank argon now. And of course, behind every great element is a great person who discovered it. Exactly for example, argon was discovered by Sir William Ramsey in Scotland in 1894. Who knew? Not me. That's why there's Google. Anyway, each element has both a boiling point and a melting point. Example! Argon's boiling point is 87.3 Kelvin, which is about negative 302.5 Fahrenheit. Argon's melting point is 83.8. Kelvin, which makes that about negative 308.8 Fahrenheit. And just because I love argon so much, I'm going to share with you some interesting facts about argon. Argon is created when potassium in the Earth's crust decays. It's the most abundant of the rare gases, and it emits light when electrically excited. Wink. I don't know why I did that. And if by, oh, I don't know, any chance you want to purchase argon, because who wouldn't want to do that? Forget gold. Argon is where it's at. You'll most likely be able to get it for 50 cents per 100 grams. You're welcome. So there we go. A lot less confusing, right? Except now you'll have to learn the elements that go with the initials. Yeah, good luck with that. But I mean, like, most of them are easy, like carbon, oxygen, helium, hydrogen, argon. And then there are some that you would probably never guess in a million years, like mercury, gold, silver. Those are the ones that are going to kill you. The only advice that I can give you is make up little sentences to, like, I don't know, jog your memory. So whenever you think of those two letters, you think of that element like there is lead in my peanut butter sandwich or Saturday night 10 or feed the iron and my favorite is probably sodium <laughs> you're also met with the issue of spelling the word. And if you can't spell, then you're sunk. But I hope that it's at least a little bit clearer now, and that I gave you some insightful knowledge on the periodic table, so now you can use it efficiently. Seriously, I hope you got something from this video. And that's all the knowledge that I'm going to enlighten you with. Hope you enjoyed Fun Facts with Robin. Yeah!